Hi everyone, in today's video I'm gonna tell you why I switched from Visual Studio Code or actually why I stopped using Visual Studio Code that I was using for about 10 years since it came out uh, in 2015. So uh, the reason is really simple. So I stopped using it because I want to switch to an AI powered code editor. So the thing is that this reminds me about my early beginnings as a web developer because uh, the funny thing is there that I actually resisted using libraries for my projects. So I was trying to do everything myself. For example, I didn't want to use a bootstrap because I thought if I'm using a bootstrap, but I'm using someone else's code and adding it to my code and representing something that is actually not my work. But the thing is that I had to use it and I realized that I'm just losing the time because at that time I created my own libraries for CSS and stylings and so on and so on. But that was a, lo a lot of time invested uh, in some things that could be uh, made uh, faster and, and used by other libraries. So, uh, for example, uh, the thing is actually uh, what actually care, uh, what actually counts is that we have a product uh, where the customers and clients are happy with that because that's only what matters and they don't actually care which libraries we used in the in the background and under the hood so is it a uh, bootstrap is this material design on so on so on. they want to have a beautifully designed websites web applications that actually do uh, their work so they have to work for them and they have to be happy so uh, this is the same thing right now with AI tools, actually, and AI code editors. I tried some other. I tried uh, uh, Cursor, actually, that is the one of the most popular. But I decided to switch to Windsurf. So why switch to Windsurf? Uh, let me show you the screen of the Windsurf, and I'll tell you why. Actually, this is a Windsurf, and. Now I'm going to show you the VS Code that we already know. So the VS Code and Windsurf look almost the same. The thing is that the Windsurf was built on top of the VS Code. So all extensions, themes and settings and configurations can be easily uh, synchronized and uh, just move to the Windsurf. So you have everything that you had uh, before and you can switch in no time and feel like you're going, uh, working in a VS Code. So uh, why am I using actually uh, Windsurf here? And uh, you could also say that uh, I could add another tools in the VS Code and extensions to help me do the AI uh, work and AI support for development. But the thing is that I switched to uh, Windsurf because it has a really good uh, support for uh, AI tools out of the box. You have a cascade here and the Windsurf knows uh, your code base when you open uh, open it in the Windsurf. So it is helping me to do uh, and predicting actually the things that I want to do. So which is really powerful. For example, I added some image, imported the image uh, like from, from my uh, computer, just pasted it into the, in the assets folder. And then I want to add uh, image into some part of the, of the uh, code. Then it automatically uh, add, adds a suggestion with the import of that particular image uh, into my code. So I just had to hit the tab and it knows that I actually wanted to import that image that I actually pasted there. So this is beautiful. So uh, why are we using these uh, tools? It's not just like uh, to do our code for us, so the, to do the uh, so-called the white coding, but it's more like to have uh, somebody who's helping us and doing the, th the things and the tasks that we don't want to do. So uh, the boring stuff like uh, moving the things around, uh, uh, just updating some uh, imports, uh, changing uh, some parts of the code, like uh, doing some translations. I tried uh, to do on a, on a project. I've tried to do uh, translations uh, within the code. So just uh, prompt, uh, send a prompt and uh, uh, Windsurf did a great job for me. It actually created a uh, uh, translations, translation files for each strings that I have in my uh, code uh, HTML part, in my HTML parts there. So I could just easily switch 
and have a translation uh, included in the my page without any other help and in no time. So uh, let's see oh, uh, other things here. So uh, this is a windsurf. So uh, it is the same almost uh, as the Visual Studio Code. You can see the Explorer here. And here's the main pane uh, here. Like uh, we can open uh, our file here. And there is a cascade. Cascade is uh, some kind of uh, chat for uh, uh, within a uh, windsurf that is actually uh, really powerful and doing things for us. So uh, in the cascade, we can uh, select any of the uh, language models that we want to use that is really interesting. And they're almost every day uh, uh, having some updates uh, with the new things uh, there. So it's, it's amazing. So you just have to try it. If you don't, you don't, you don't have to use it. But uh, when you uh, when you try it, uh, you will just keep using. It. So uh, you can uh, select any of these uh, language models here. But the thing is that uh, some, of, most of them are paid. But uh, you also have a DeepSeek, uh, which is free, and you could use a DeepSeek uh, for your work. But uh, I recommend uh, subscribing and getting more credits. And also, what is good uh, when you subscribe. Well, for the first time when you register, you get some credits and you have a 15 days of trial to try these uh, credits and do the things. So uh, using these credits that I get, I created uh, right now, uh, I created a really good and then the uh, wide project with the routing, with everything, a lot of pages and modules, and I haven't spent yet the credits. So uh, you have to try. So right now, uh, let me open the page for the Windsurf. Okay, this is a page. You just have to go and download Windsurf Editor for your uh, for your uh, uh, OS. Sorry, uh, does matter. Uh, it is supported on both uh, in uh, Mac OS and Windows. I'm not sure about the Linux yet, but uh, you have an option uh, to download. And after you download it, you have to sign in there because you have a credits. Uh, to use there. So uh, we can see uh, in my profile here, uh, we can see the usage, what I actually used, uh, and the total completions here and uh, uh, in the last eight days, and what I actually uh, used here. So uh, we can see the usage and the subscription. So I have nothing used uh, here because I'm on a free and uh, just uh, as I've been using it for about three, three weeks so far too actually two weeks so far, uh, I have these credits uh, to spend here. And also I can uh, use some other credits there. So you have a free two weeks for a free trial here. I have 25 prompt credits and I haven't yet used uh, these 25 pro credits. And uh, with the pro model, you have uh, 500 prompt credits and what I made with these 25, I think that I'm subscribing totally. So this is something that I'm going to use really. So uh, let's uh, just see, we can see the capabilities here and uh, cascade and we have a tab uh, completion. And I think that uh, these tab completions are uh, actually free and you're not spending uh, your credits there. So uh, let's go back here. And the thing is that I want to show you here how uh, how can you use it to speed up the, the development process. For example, uh, I selected the chat GPT uh, 4.1 for now, but uh, for development, there are more better uh, things like uh, they also added the Gemini 2.5 Pro that is actually the latest uh, uh, latest uh, LLM uh, from uh, Google that is really powerful for coding and stuff but uh, it is just uh, taking more credits you can see here uh, you can uh, you can see how much credits is taking for the requests so I just decided to use uh, GPT 4.1 so far and I'm just gonna demonstrate what the GPT 4.1 can do you know, with these credits here so uh, let's do this thing. Uh, I'm running this application. Actually, it's an Angular application here in the browser. So uh, I have here uh, this uh, pagination that I made previously. And this is just a basic pagination. This is a uh, basic component in Angular. So the thing is that I have to uh, I have to redesign this component to look a bit better and to just uh, be better than this because this is just a basic thing. So uh, what I did, 
I was just Googling and searching for uh, pagination and I came up uh, with this uh, Pinterest here uh, because usually I'll go to Dribble or, or, or Behance, but it just popped up here and uh, I like this one here. So uh, even if it is coming from Dribble here, but I'm just gonna use this for the testing purposes. And what am I gonna do? I'm just going to uh, take a screenshot of this. Actually, uh, I'm gonna take a screenshot of uh, this pagination here and I'm gonna open uh, Windsurf here and the Cascade in a writing mode and I'm gonna paste this image and tell the cascade. Here is an example of the nation that you want to implement implement uh, in my code. Could you you uh, sorry Psst. could you please update at uh, the current shared component is link pagination to look the same as the one provided on this screenshot and the screenshot. Okay, this is really, really a basic prompt. So uh, we want a better result. We have to be uh, more precise and so on and so on. But this is just for testing purposes to demonstrate what can we actually do. So uh, I assume that we could do the same thing with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, if, we've had, if we have uh, designs in Figma or so on, we can just uh, make a screenshot and provide it here and it will generate something almost the same. So hit enter and wait for it to generate. As you can see, it is generating here and uh, it is actually reviewing what it has to do and what we actually want him, uh, this uh, tool to do for us. So it says uh, we have a, a, a top date shared pagination. Uh, we are reviewing the pagination component, understand the structure and so on and so on. So uh, it is analyzing, searching, searching. Okay. and it says, okay, here's how we we'll proceed. So it will explain us how is it going to proceed uh, with it. And it is going to uh, style and change the TypeScript logic and update the, uh, the page. So as we can see here, it is actually editing and ch changing these files. And the most interesting thing here, and it's the same in the, as in the cursor AI, uh, we can see the changes as uh, uh, git changes and uh, actually differences between the uh, previous version that we had and the version that uh, it actually created for us. So we can go uh, file by file and accept or reject the changes. So uh, first, I'll always I wait, uh, I'm waiting for it uh, actually right now, but uh, always I, I do the same. So I wait for it to finish every single file and then review the files and uh, just uh, accept or change some parts or accept some parts of the code there. So it is still editing pagination component TS here, as we can see, and it is spinning and loading. And uh, we can uh, just, we have just to wait for it to finish, to be able to use it. And it says it is taking longer than expected, but I think uh, it is still running. Okay. Let's go and finish everything. Okay. It looks like it finished. So just editing styles here. And now we're going to see what is actually, what it actually changed here and what can we use it here and or Okay, edited, suggesting, by, okay. Okay, okay, it is suggesting some commands. We don't wanna do this, but we wanna go here and see the changes. So we can see that it has uh, three files edited. So we are on the first file and we can see that it removed the uh, button that we already had. So we added button container here and buttons with a class nav button and arrows, some kind of errors, uh, arrows here for previous. And we can accept this. And also here, 
Okay, uh, what I don't like here, but uh, in one of the fu uh, future videos, I'm gonna show you well, the uh, MCPs or model contracts protocols that I'm using in the in the uh, windsurf uh, that are uh, staying in the uh, in, that, that they are actually using the latest uh, libraries and the latest updates from the documentation for these uh, to to code and follow them. So. Uh, Please subscribe to the channel to not miss and not miss uh, the next video about these things. Okay, I'll just uh, accept. So accept here, or we can just uh, say accept changes. And we have uh, another file here where it just uh, changed some things. Okay, usually in the production and uh, serious things, you're not accepting like this, but I'm just uh, curious what it actually made here because this is just like basic component that is not matter. And now I'm just gonna uh, stop this and ngs it again to see it uh, in the browser and here. And we are having some issues here at the moment. So a component HTML HTML, epic niche, require inputs, total pages, current pages. Uh, so what can we see here is that it actually renamed these here, but what we can do, so it is actually suggesting some things here. You see the total pages. So we have to add name here, total pages and the current page, it's tab, and now it is fixed. The thing is here that uh, it is suggesting the things and uh, we can just uh, hit tab and accept the things here. So as we haven't checked what it changed because we just accepted everything, we didn't notice that uh, the uh, these inputs have been changed. So hit save and uh, now go back to the screen and just let we see what we actually have here. So as you can see, we have this pagination that is actually beautifully showing the things and showing the pages as you can see here and going next, 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 next and disabling the button at the end and in the, uh, in the first it's disabling the previous and we can jump between pages. Actually, we can go to the last page, we can go to the sub page and it is looking nice for the first try. So what am I doing, uh, doing and telling this? Because um, if we take a closer look at the design, actually uh, these previous and next buttons are, let's say fine, but uh, the rounding is almost the same, that's fine. But the thing is that uh, with, the, with these, uh, we can see on the design that they are just next to each other and the, only the first and the last one have rounded borders and the uh, ones in between are squares. So uh, this can be done uh, by prompting, uh, by providing a better prompt because I said at the beginning uh, we have to add the better prompts but this is just for the sake of this uh, tutorial and uh, just to demonstrate what can we do with the AI tools in one prompt and just uh, to have like a base a structure to start working on something. So uh, for now, uh, we have added this uh, design almost the same to our component here. And we can just adjust this design instead of writing everything from scratch. So this is interesting, and this is important. And also with another tools that I have, we can create better and without uh, with less uh, prompts. And we have some kind of configurations that we can add in the windsurf to use all the time when we are prompting so we don't have to repeat ourselves each time to say, okay, use this, use that. So this is something that I'm going to show in the next videos and please subscribe to, to stay up to date. So this is it when it comes to this video uh, for today. And I hope you enjoy the content and uh, the video. If you like it, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.